Okay, now we are going to do punctuation which is very very important for a passage if you don't have any punctuation marks the whole meaning will change. It becomes so very uh, vague without punctuation marks. So there are so many punctuation marks and each and every punctuation mark has its own role to play. Okay, we are going to discuss all the different punctuation marks and then I'm going to give you passages to punctuate. Okay, punctuation marks are indicators that are used in written text to separate sentences or a part of a sentence from another. They are also important markers of pause between parts of sentences. Okay, now I'm going to tell you uh, the different, that is kinds of punctuation marks. First one that I'm going to use is full stop. Okay, uh, that's the main thing and it's very, very common. But there are so many other marks which you have to know. Punctuation. Okay, kinds of punctuation and its uses. Now we are going to do kinds of punctuation marks and its uses. Okay, first what we are going to do is full stop. First one is used to uh, mark the end of a declarative the end of a declare I won't say it is used to mark the end of a sentence because uh, I have already taught you there are different kinds of sentences isn't it declarative imperative then we have exclamatory and interrogative so full stop doesn't come for uh, interrogative or exclamatory sentence that is why I am specifying here to mark the end of a declarative and imperative sentences. Okay, so this is the first use. Second use is to separate the date from the year. date from the year. We say uh, 27th of July 1997. So we keep a full stop there and then write the year. So I will give you examples after we discuss everything. Third one. Uh, after certain abbreviations of names, titles, degrees, after certain um, abbreviations of names, titles, degrees okay 
Now shall we see some examples now? Okay. Uh, end of a declarative and imperative sentence. First one. Um, the earth rotates round the sun. Full stop. Okay. This is a declarative sentence. Next example. Imperative. Please um, close the fridge. After you take water. Take water from the fridge. So the earth rotates around the sun. It's a declarative sentence. Please close the fridge after you take the water, after you take water from the fridge. Okay, that's a request, isn't it? When you say please, it's a request. So what uh, kind of a sentence it is? It is imperative sentence. Okay, next one, to separate the date from the year. She passed her master's degree okay uh, on thirty first December. 1955 okay 31st December 1955 so we use the full stop after we uh, use the date to separate okay to separate the date from the year next one after certain abbreviation of names we say Mr. Khan. See. Now I have kept a full stop here because this is an abbreviation for Mr. M-I-S-C-E-R. Okay. Mr. Khan or uh, M-B-B-S. This is Master of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Science. Um, okay, this is degree, this is name and titles. Uh, you see, Reverend Father or we say Sister Superior. So, these are all titles. And this is a degree and this is a uh, name. So we use after all these. Is that clear? These are the usages of full stop. Full stop is just one dot like this after uh, we finish our sentence. Next one is a question mark. It's very very easy. Question mark. Question mark is marked like this. At the end of questions such as um, rhetorical questions or question tags. Okay. At the end of, a, of an uh, interrogative sentence or after a uh, question tag we use question marks. is used at the end of 
an interrogative sentence okay at the end of an inter i told you declarative and imperative sentence what is used a full stop but by the end of an interrogative sentence what is used a question mark next one um, at the end of question tags okay i'm going to give you examples for this first one interrogative sentence where is the book that i gave you this is an interrogative sentence so i marked it with a question mark there are so many simple questions also like what is your name how are you how old are you what's your father's name everything ends with a question mark because it is an interrogative sentence okay next one at the end of the of uh, question tags The rose is a beautiful flower. Isn't it? Okay. The rose is a beautiful flower. isn't it this is a question tag okay now isn't it is an abbreviation for is it not okay is it not so it is uh, used it in this form so this is called a question tag first you come out with a declarative sentence and you add on a question tag okay the rose is a beautiful flower isn't it so we use a question mark for interrogative sentences and also for question tags now let's quickly revise kinds of punctuation marks and its uses first we did full stop it is used to mark the end of a declarative and imperative sentence next to separate the date from the year third one after certain abbreviations of names titles and degrees uh, example for the first one the earth rotates around the sun please close the fridge after you take water so for declarative and imperative i have given you example the next one to separate the date from the year we have here she passed her masters degree on 31st december 1955 okay you keep a full stop here and also here mr khan uh, mr khan Uh, okay the next one after certain abbreviation of names titles degrees mr khan okay mbbs this is a degree reverend father reverend sister superior so these are titles even doctor you can say doctor dr we keep okay so all these are uh, th th this is the title and this is the degree and this a name so now you are thorough with the use of full stop okay the next uh, punctuation mark is a question mark is used at the end of an interrogative sentence and it is used at the end of question tags interrogative question uh, sentence is this where is the book that i gave you question mark it is a questioning sentence so we have a question mark next one the rose is a beautiful flower isn't it so this is a question tag so we use a question mark is that clear now so two marks 
uh, mean two different punctuation marks you have learnt. You are thorough with it now. Okay, we will proceed to the next one. Next, the most important among the punctuation marks is comma. Okay, a comma has so many duties to perform or roles to perform and you will be amazed. I am going to write now there are almost around 8 or 9 usages of comma. Okay, the comma is used. Okay, this is the third mark. First one is used more when to separate more than two words or uh, two words in a series is used to separate more than two words in a series. Okay, so it's used to separate more than two words in a series. Then it's used to uh, separate words, pairs of words, phrases and clauses. To separate uh, pairs of words. phrases and clauses. I will give you examples of all this later. To indicate a word or group of words in a position. indicate a group of words or a word in a position. Okay, are you taking down all the points? Next one. To separate the words yes or no from the rest of the sentence. To separate the words yes or no from the rest of the sentence. Okay, next point. To separate the month and the year or the date and the year. month and the year or the date and the year. Next one, in letters after salutation and complimentary close. Uh, this also has undergone a lot of transformation. Um, earlier they used to write uh, to so and so comma um, the manager comma uh, some firm and that, all that ok. But nowadays things have become very modern they do not use any commas at all in uh, 
letter writing. But I will just teach you how well this rule implies. Okay. Next one. Okay. To. I am sorry. In letters. That is in letter writing. Who is write, sitting and writing letters these days? Only emails we are using. In letters. After salutation. What is salutation? Salutation is uh, dear sir or dear madam that is salutation or my dear friend or uh, dear Kartik. So, all these are salutations. After salutation and complimentary close. What is complimentary close? Towards the end of the letter you write, uh, convey my regards uh, to your parents with love, with lots of love, comma, you sign your name, isn't it? Or uh, with, uh, with all best wishes uh, to you, your loving friend, so and so. So, over there you will use a comma. Next one. Um, to separate certain expressions such as uh, however, of course. Certain expressions like however, of course. Of course, etc. Okay, next point to separate question tags. A question tag ends with a question mark. But before that, before the end of the sentence, you put a comma to separate question tags. Okay, next one. To separate this very, very important. To separate um, reported speech from direct speech. Okay, now I am going to give you uh, examples of a few. Used to separate more than two words. Okay, examples I will write here. Um, he, he went to school. Taking his. His bag, water bottle, and tiffin box. Now, if you see, to separate more than two words like bag, comma, water bottle, and tiffin box. So, more than two words when you separate now there are three so you are using the comma here is that clear next one to separate pairs of words phrases and clauses usually when you use a, a phrase or a clause before which you put a comma next one 
to indicate a group of uh, words or a word in opposition like you just uh, uh, when you use a group of words and then you come out with another idea you put a comma to separate the words yes or no from the rest of the sentence um, there also you use comma to separate the month and year or the date of the year okay i'll just give you this i'll give you one example for this pairs of words phrases and clauses um, after uh, or i'll just give you now we did clauses isn't it so complex sentences we uh, separated two different clauses that is the dependent clause from the independent clause by means of a comma i'm going to give you an example although she sang well comma see we use the comma here because this is an independent clause she could not win the prize so do you, have you understood so when we use clauses we use a comma next i'm going to give you an example of this uh, separate a month or a year or the date and the year okay we uh, celebrated we celebrated diwali on the 27th of november or don't want diwali because every year you celebrate isn't it we can't use the year so we celebrated um uh, his birthday on the 27th of november 2000 and 10 see we put a comma here next one in letters after salutations and complimentary close i have already explained that to you uh, with kind regards comma dear sir comma your loving friend comma or yours sincerely comma okay all these we use uh here next one to separate expressions like however of course etc okay to separate question tags i'll give you an example for this it is a bright day bright day today isn't it so to separate the sentence from the question tag you use a comma and to separate reported speech from direct speech she said comma then we start the direct speech value come 
tomorrow for the class okay so before you start a direct speech you just put a comma now have you understood uh, there are so many uh, usages of a comma and uh, you have to know the correct comma is marked like this okay first one is used to separate more than two words in a series i've given you an example here okay to separate pairs of words phrases and clauses again here i've given this is a clause and you've separated to indicate a group of words or a word in a position i've explained to you to separate words yes and no from the rest of the sentence to separate a month and year uh, and the or the date and the year here i have explained here we use a comma here next one in letters after salutation and complimentary close with kind regards comma dear sir comma your loving friend comma your sincerely comma so all these are salutations and uh, complimentary close okay next one to separate question tags it is a bright day today is in comma isn't it okay question mark next one to separate reported speech from direct speech she said comma will you come tomorrow for the class okay now you end the inverted commas and you put a comma here is that clear now these are the usages of comma okay now we have seen uh, full stop uh, we have seen uh, question mark and we have seen comma now we are going to see semicolon semicolon and colon what is semicolon that is it is uh, both a comma and a dot on top okay a colon is two dots whereas a semicolon is one dot and a comma The semicolon is used when a greater pause is required than is indicated by the comma. It is also used uh, there are two examples so we are just going to see. So the fourth one now is semicolon. Or I'll just write it together it's a semicolon. dot and a comma <clears throat> okay is used when a greater pause is required pause means stop is required dan is indicated by the comma dan is indicated um by the comma dan is indicated by the comma now for comma you are just pausing for a short while but when a greater pause is required we use the semicolon okay then i'll just uh, write here a to separate the clauses of compound sentence when they contain a comma to separate the clauses of compound sentence
when they contain a comma. Okay, example. Uh, okay, I'll give you the examples later. The second one to separate a series of loosely related clauses. Loosely related clauses. Okay. <clears throat> Now these examples I am going to give you. Okay? Uh, first of all, a semicolon is used when a greater pause is required than it is indicated in a comma. Then the main usages are to separate the clauses of compound sentence when they contain a comma. So I am going to give you a compound sentence. He was a brave. large hearted man semicolon and we all honored him Okay, <clears throat> um, and we all honored him. Next one, next for this, I'm going to give you the example. Her heart was strong, her life difficult. Okay. Now, if you see, uh, when you use a semicolon, <coughs> this will be different and this will be different. When we use a comma, it will be a continuation of a same thought. But here, her heart was strong, her life difficult. That is, heart and life cannot be connected. So, her heart was strong, her life difficult. So, two different concepts together or two different thoughts together we use a semicolon that is to separate a series of loosely connected clauses her heart was strong her life difficult now here this is a dependent clause and uh, here we don't have a verb at all whereas this has a finite verb and it's a complete sense so loosely connected uh, related clauses Okay, next one to separate the clauses of compound sentence when they contain a comma. Here, he was a brave, large hearted man. When we have a comma, the next step will be a semicolon. Okay, and we all honored him. Okay, so this is how we use a semicolon when we need a greater pause than which is required for a comma, we use a semicolon. Then we use it for uh, a great, uh, that is we use it for compound sentence. When a comma is already used, we use a semicolon. Then to separate a series of loosely connected clauses, we use the semicolon. Is that clear? Okay, now we have seen semicolon. Uh, you have understood it. That's what you said. Next, we are going to the fifth punctuation mark, colon, colon mark. Okay, what is a colon mark? It is marked like this, two dots. Okay, semicolon is dot and a comma 
and here we have two dots ok. A colon is introduced um, ok first use to introduce a quotation or speech. to introduce a quotation or a speech. Next one, to introduce a list after phrases such as the following. Or for example, okay. Now these two I am going to explain by means of examples. To introduce a quotation or speech, example, Shakespeare said, Life um, Life is like a stage. Okay, now <clears throat> before a quotation, we use two dots, which is colon mark, and also. When we say the following or that is when you make a list to introduce a list after phrases. Sharon bought the following. Pencil box A compass set And <clears throat> A dozen pens Ok, when you have a long list of things uh, like the following, when you say the following, you use the colon mark, ok. You listen here to introduce uh, a list after phrases. Uh, I can even say the following or you can say as follows, all that we <coughs> use the colon. Is that clear? Now, ok, we will just check it up again. Colon mark is uh, used to introduce a quotation or a speech. Okay, Shakespeare said life is like a stage. So, it is a quote and he has introduced or he is uh, giving a quotation. Next one, Sharon bought the following. That is, uh, this is an example of to introduce a list after phrases. Sharon bought the following, you use a colon, a pencil box, a compass, set and a dozen pens. So, when you have a list and when you say the following or uh, for example, also you can put two dots and state something ok. So, all this you use colon is that clear now? So, we have learnt now semicolon and colon I am sure you are thorough with these two now we will move on to the next punctuation mark. Next what we are going to see is the dash ok and then a hyphen and quotation marks. All these we are going to see and uh, these are these are uh, one of the 
punctuation marks that you should know. Okay, and the last but not the least will be the uh, capital letters. Capital letters we think oh only for uh, beginning of a sentence, but there are a lot of usages, and I'll be discussing uh, that with you. So now we will do. So how many have we finished so far? Uh, full stop, question mark, exclamatory mark. Uh, we didn't finish exclamatory. Full stop, question mark, comma. Semicolon, colon. So five we have finished. Uh, we'll finish with exclamatory mark and then go on. Okay, sixth one. Exclamatory mark is very easy. Always when we have an exclamatory sentence, we use the exclamatory mark. That is uh, for an exclamatory sentence. Is used at the end of an exclamation to express grief, shock or joy. Okay. Example. Good heavens. I I lost my pearls. Next one, joy, I just say. Bravo. You have done well. Okay, so two different exclamatory sentences I have given you. Next one, the seventh one, <coughs> dash. You put a small dash like that and we need that for the punctuation mark and uh, this is one amongst the marks. Dash is used before or after a list. That is uh, instead of uh, colon mark, we can also use a dash. Uh, whatever we saw there are as follows and you can put a dash, okay. Next one, uh, to mark a break in a sentence. Okay, example. He went home after the play. After the play, then in the bin, and I 
reach the uh, station okay so i've used it after uh, uh, before a uh, uh, list or before a uh, uh, name title of the play after or before a list or uh, before a uh, after or before a list or title okay I'll just write here and also to mark a break in a sentence maybe at uh, 6 p.m. So, we pause and we write. Okay, the next one, the eighth one is hyphen. Okay, uh, this is dash this this is an exclamatory mark this is a hyphen see a hyphen is different from a dash because dash is a longer uh, line whereas hyphen is a shorter line it is used in between words now let's see in the formation of compound words In the formation of compound words like um, the kettle drum or we can there are so many compound words where we use the hyphen okay next one to uh, with certain prefixes for okay with certain prefixes Example re entry, Vice Chancellor. Vice Chancellor. And uh, ex minister. Here also I'll give the example. Okay, uh, see both are separate words but you use a, a dash or a small dash which is a hyphen. Okay, this dash is different, this dash is different and also before uh, with certain prefixes like re, vice, x, all this we use a small hyphen. Then we with numbers that are spelt out, for example, 22. With numbers spelt out. Twenty-two, thirty-four. Okay, is that clear? Or twenty-first. Twenty first. 
Okay, let's see now. So dash and hyphen you should know how to differentiate. I have already explained dash now hyphen. Hyphen is used in the formation of compound words example kettle drum. There are so many um, uh, compound words. Compound words means two separate words linked together to form a uh, single word. With certain prefixes that is re, vice and x, re-entry, vice chancellor, x minister. With numbers spelt out, for example, 22, 34, 21st, 22nd, all this we put a small hyphen. So now we have done exclamatory mark, dash and hyphen. We have two more to go, the capital letters and the quotation marks. Is that clear now?